In this tutorial, I will explain how a Varian works with documents and document templates. Let's start with an example straight away. With documents, it's easier this way. Let's go back to one of our applications from previous tutorials. This application manages customers. Suppose that in this application we want an operator to be able to send a letter to the customer and we want the system to prepare the text of the letter as a Word document. The operator can then print it out and send to the customer. The text of the letter will be the same for all customers except the greeting that should obviously use the name of the customer that the letter is for. I have prepared a simple Word document to illustrate this. This is how the document looks like. Note how the document refers to the customer. We can see it here. In a where I am, it is possible to refer to the attributes of a business object using the same notation that is used in business rules and processes. The name of the business object followed by dot and then the name of the attribute. This reference should be enclosed in double angular brackets. The instance of the object that the document will use must be in the where I am context. For more details about the context, please refer to the user guide. For example, it can be an object whose form is currently being displayed on the screen, or it can be a record in the list of query results that the user clicks on, or it can be an instance used by a process. Let's see now how to integrate this document into an AwareIM application. To do this, we need to define a document template. We create a new document template, give it a name, and then select its type from the list of available types. In this case, the type is MS Word document. Now we can import the document file and create the template. So now I just need to save the template. Now that we have created an AwareIM document template, we need to display it to the operator. When the operator sees the form of the customer, we want the system to display a button. Clicking on this button should display the document personalized for the customer whose form the operator is looking at. To implement this, we will define an operation for the customer's editing form. For more details about forms and form operations, please watch the forms tutorial. So let's go to the form of the customer object. Go to the panel operations property and add the print letter operation. The type of the operation will be create document and we will need to select our document template in this drop-down here. Let's see how this works. So we'll log into the application using the browser. I have configured the visual perspective of, of the application to display a list of customers when users log in. Let's click on some customer to display its form. As you can see, our aim display the print letter operation at the top of the form. Let's click on it. Our aim displays the document in a separate window and as you can see it is correctly addressed to the customer we are looking at. This customer is therefore in the context. 
the operator can now print out this document or save it as a file. Document templates can be used not only in operations, but also in rules of processes. A process can display a particular template to the operator by using the display document action. For more details about processes, please watch the processes tutorial. Note that we can use other types of documents for personalized templates, such as Microsoft Excel, text, HTML, and reports. They work in very much the same way as Word templates. Now I want to say a few words about expressions that you use inside tags to personalize templates. You can refer not just to individual attributes there, but you can also use arithmetic expressions and functions. You can also format the output separately within, the, within each tag expression. By default, a WhereIAM will use the format of the attribute, but you can override the default. The formatting expression must be specified after the comma. For example, if we are referring to the date of birth attribute and we want to change the format in which it is displayed in the document template, we use the following expression. Expressions and functions that you can use in documents are very powerful and with their help you can create really sophisticated documents which will be automatically populated by a where I am with data from the database. I will give you a couple of examples. One of them is the list table start and list table end functions that allow you to populate a Microsoft Word table with the data from a list represented by a multiple reference or from a query. For example, let's include a table of communication with the customer in our document. In our application, we have the contact node object, representing a record of communication with the customer. The customer object has a multiple reference to the contact node object. in the attribute called communication. We will use this attribute inside the list table start function to display a list of all communications with the customer. Let me show you. So here I have inserted an MS Word table into the document with some nice styling and the headers of the columns. We only need to insert our tag expressions in the first row of the table, and at runtime, a WRAM will populate the rest. First, we need to use the list table start function to mark the start of the data in the table. The function has one parameter that indicates the data to populate in the table. It can either be a list or a query. In our case, we will use the list, customer.communication. Then we need to indicate which data from the list will be present in each column. So here we start with contact node dot date registered, followed by subject, and then followed by duration. After the last column, we need to insert the list table end function to indicate the end of the data. The list table end function does not have any parameters. Let's see how this works. So I have added the document to the application and logged in using the browser. Let's look at the first customer. Here we can see some communication records associated with this customer. Let's print out the document. As you can see, these communication records are now included in the table. Note that instead of specifying a list, we could use the expression involving the find action, like so. 
This find action is equivalent to specifying a list. It finds the records belonging to this list. But using a query allows you to extract any data from the system and include it in the table. It doesn't even have to be related to the customer. Another example I wanted to show you is using conditional expressions in documents. Suppose that if a customer is younger than 18, our document should include some sort of a warning. To implement this, we can use the show section start and section end expressions. So here I have a conditional section. If the condition holds, that is, if the age of the customer is less than 18, a message will be displayed. The section start expression marks the start of the section and section end expression marks the end of the section. Let's see how this works. So again, I have modified the application to include this document template and logged in using the browser. When we go to our customer, we can see that she is well over 18 years old. And when we print the document, we can see that there is no warning. Let's now change date of birth of the customer and make her a little girl. Now if we print out the letter, we can see the warning. Now I'm going to explain how to store a document in an object's attribute. If a document requires personalization, like the greeting in the previous document, we must define document templates that will be populated with data at runtime. However, if you just want your application to store the document in its original format that the user uploads from somewhere, then you don't need document templates at all. You can just define an attribute of the document type and a where I am will handle the rest. Let's get our customer object to store his resume, for example. Let's define an attribute called CV of the document type. Let's make sure that this attribute is displayed on the form of the object. That's all we need to do. At runtime, Aware Aim will add appropriate buttons to allow the user to upload the document and view it. Let's see this in action. So again, I log into the application and bring up the form of the customer. I can now see a control that allows me to upload the document. So let's upload some document. And let's now close the form and open it again. This time the control shows that the document is already there. We can view the document if we click on it. Or we can delete it. It is possible to store the document either in the database or in a file system on the server. To the end user, it doesn't really matter where the document is stored. But if you don't want to store too many documents in the database, you can select the file directory option.
In this case, you need to define an attribute in the object that will store the path to the document in the file system of the server. You may need to define rules to populate this attribute with appropriate values. Note again that it does not matter where the document is stored. The interface that AwareIM offers to the end users to work with documents will be exactly the same.